Good evening. It is Agron Kar. It is my pleasure to be with you in this evening. Yes, it has been a holiday for you, a very important holiday. You call it your Memorial Day. It is the day you remember your dead. Not just any dead, but those who have been in the armed forces and who have fought for causes that they may not have agreed with. But they were out there, some of them in just life-saving capacity. You called them medics. And these people were dedicated to the welfare of those who were fighting. So if they were wounded, they would oftentimes under the same kind of fire, in the same kind of danger, but not having any weapons, they would go and take care of the people who were wounded and try to return them, pull them back out of the line of fire so that they could be made whole again, taken back to hospitals. These are dedicated people. They did not choose to fight, did not want to fight. And so they still served because they did not want to fight, but they could serve. They could help others in the form of being a medic. Many people not quite as strongly attached to the to the attitude, I will say, of not wanting to fight, would simply go and do what they needed to do. They often fought or they helped in other ways. There were cooks as well as medics, but cooks could and did sometimes bear guns because there was a need for more fighters and no one could stop to eat. And so no one was cooking. Instead, they were fighting. And these people too served. Perhaps they did not want to fight, but they had taken the oath, the promise to defend the country, to defend the flag, to defend the people. And sometimes they, of course, had to fight. And sometimes they were also killed or wounded or injured. But it, they were still willing to sacrifice themselves if necessary. And then there were those who were simply drafted, made to fight. There were those who volunteered to fight. All different levels of people involved in these battles. And they were all dedicated to one another and to their mutual survival and well-being. And so wars are complicated, but those who died in war or even in peacetime or there are sometimes deaths in peacetime due to accidents, due to other situations, uh, such as bombings or terrorist activity. Once they have committed themselves to defend, so it is that they had to meet all situations, regardless of what was happening, and do their best to help one another, to defend the people, to defend the country. And so it is appropriate 
to honor these people in this day. And I hope you have given them at least a passing thought while perhaps you went on to celebrations with your family member and friends over this holiday. So it becomes one for you to enjoy. But let us remember our war dead, those who were willing, those who were unwilling, but all who served. All right. What kind of questions do you have for me this evening? This background is a beautiful background. It has so many stars on it, just like you were asked to imagine in your meditation. Do you have any questions on this day? If no one has a question, then there was no reason for me to continue to stay. Okay. Um, they keep telling us that we're we're God, and but we're stuck in this body, and we don't feel like we're like totally connected to who we really are. You mean so, you don't feel like you're God? That's for sure, yes. Because you, you are limited with the body. The body limits everything you do. And that doesn't give you the idea that you're God, because if you're God, you're not limited. <laughs> that's true. But you are embracing the limits rather, embrace, rather than embracing your powers. That which you do have. So when you think of that, uh, what you do have, uh, and if you can marshal those thoughts, you will feel more powerful. Now think about it. When you have a problem that you need to solve, you search for answers. And one of the ways in which you can search for an answer is simply to sit quietly and go within almost a meditation, but just think about your problem. It isn't necessarily a meditation, but it is a method by which you will find your answers because the knowledge is within you. So sit quietly and think about your question and what you need to know to solve the puzzle, um, how to solve the puzzle um, that you are seeking to solve. And, and ignore the physical limitations that you may have? Physical limitations, yes. Well, you have a body. Uh -huh. And that is good. So let me finish talking about what you do have. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. I know you cannot fly like the birds. You cannot... Um, be sure foot like a mountain goat and be able to climb easily up a mountain. No, you are limited. You cannot run as fast as an ostrich. You are limited, but you are not limited. You can run as fast as you can run and as fast as you choose to run. And you are correct in that when your body ages, and maybe due to bad habits that you might have had in the past, smoking or smoking would be one of those. Perhaps you didn't eat the right foods. There are many things that um, may have a, may affect your ability to run fast and run freely. But you can run. Everything has its limits, and. Although you say God is unlimited, and he is, but he does not choose to run. It is not part of himself that he has legs in that way. 
So to compare yourself to God and say, I am limited is um, not exactly true. So you are unlimited in finding solutions to your problems. You are unlimited in creating what you want in the world. Um, you are quite a creator because you make decisions in every day. And these decisions really shape the world that you are experiencing. And the thoughts that you have, the judgments that you make, um, are also instrumental in shaping the world. Now, there are many discussions between liberals and conservatives. And so when, an, when a decision, we will say, from your Supreme Court comes out, some people will like the decision, some people will not. And judgments will be made and emotions will result as of these emotion, of these judgments. Some people will be happy, some people will be unhappy. Some people will try to distort what has been said and make it mean something else. You call it spinning. And some people will try to spin information and facts at all times. These people are actively creating. They are creating in ways which can be helpful and can be harmful at the same, or at the same time people will be spinning and trying to bring about exactly the thoughts in other people so their political party their ideology, the things that they think are the best for people in the world or in the United States will be advanced and done. And some people think that they may do anything they want to get their way. So they will try to be perhaps unlawful in some of the things they do. They may want to kill someone. They may want to injure someone. They may want to lie and tell you that it is the truth. They are busy creating and creating their own karma. And you will listen to these people and you will make your judgments. And so you will determine what you think about the world. Is it a good place? Is it a bad place? It will be your determination and you are actively shaping world through your judgments and your perceptions because each and every person has a different world from everyone else you are all individuals and you all live in your own individual world there are ways that you will touch one another and ways in which you will be joined together and united and support one another. And there are other ways in which you may not be united and you will not support one another. It is a changing world and you create it. So when you look at what you can do by a lot of active thinking and working on making your desire come true or your belief come true, you are shaping the world. When you are friendly with people you, and you make friends, you find compatriots in what you want to accomplish. And so, again, you are creating. You're creating your world, making your world more of what you want it to be by enlisting the aid of others. And so you are constantly creating in every day. And in that way, you are totally unlimited. And there are other things that you could do because you have been created by God 
you are made up of the stuff of God. So <clears throat> you have all the powers of God. You may not believe it. You may use the trick, if you will, by saying that God, we are limited. And God is not. Uh -huh. That is true. But it is. it still does not limit you. Your own choices limit you. Do you understand? Uh, not exactly, but I, I guess it's the only place where unlimited is mentally, not physically. <laughs> oh, that is true. The physical world, although it is a world of illusions, still has its limitations that are still created by you. It's impossible to understand until you move into spirit once again, and then you can see the illusions of the world that are created by the people who are alive and within the physical realm. Um, and that is about all that I can say. But those things that you think are solid are still made up of very quickly moving molecules, atoms. And so they're made up of energy, but you think of them as being hard and solid. And so it is your body also is made up of energy in individual cells, but you think of it as solid. While it is not, it is all individual cells just joining together, to working together to create you as a person in your own mind and the illusion of how you see yourself. It all comes together. So you should not recognize that as a limitation because it is an illusion, whether you are limited or you are free. Hmm. Illusions we should be able to ignore, but <laughs> somehow we can't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not understand that last comment. I said an illusion always made me think that if it's an illusion, I can ignore it because it doesn't exist. But I can't do that here. <laughs> no, no, it is true. Um, because the illusion is about existence. It's very hard to understand in the physical body. And it's much easier to understand when you move into spirit and you no longer have a physical body. But there is still a you. <laughs> uh -huh. And you are simply different in form and you have the same powers <clears throat> that you have in the physical of communication and of sight and of hearing so that you have almost the same senses however they are just illusions in in when you are in spirit huh. because the illusion that is you um, seems to have everything that you need. And it takes a time, but you even gradually re release that illusion and you are content to be just you in spirit, a spark of energy. Oh, okay. So these are sparks of energy uh, since they're um not physical anymore they can't really um i don't know how to put that uh well you know like you were saying because we're here physically we affect the world and what we do affects everything but if you're in spirit you can't affect what goes on in the world right that is correct okay okay but you can go anywhere you want <laughs> but you can what? You can go anywhere you want, whereas we can't. <laughs> oh, mm, yes. 
um, we, we don't need to travel either to go oh, anywhere that we want. We do not need to travel. Oh, you just Why think about figure it. that one out. Oh, yeah. And what do you just think about it? And you see it? <laughs> and Where yes, you go? yes, because um, everything is mental. So it's uh -huh. the same as if we had a mind and, and we needed. If I thought of buying an ice cream cone, I'd have an ice cream cone. <laughs> yes, if you were, if you had a tongue to lap it. Right. <laughs> and enjoy it. You know, right, something that again is lost when you come into spirit. Of course, uh -huh. you need nothing, and so you are content. Uh -huh. Everything is good. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you for yeah. your question. Huh? Thank you for your question. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Encore, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, the work I've done, it's getting much, much easier to function in this world because I see the delineations and things. So I'm going to ask you a little bit of a higher question. Um, I guess the higher you go, it's endless of what you can see and what you can do. So for you, because I think this is so interesting. Number one, how old are you if you count years? Or is there any way that you can describe it that I would understand it? And um, if you if you look towards us right now, what is behind you or what is around you three quarters of the way? Because I'm totally impressed with all of what you say, but I, I'm curious because I feel you and um I, I'm curious because I think the higher up you go, the higher up you go and there's no limit. So number one, um, if you have an age that I can relate to, which you might not, um, and around you three quarters of the way from your shoulders around your back and to your other shoulder, because I see the light you shed, you shed towards us, but what's behind you? I, okay. The first question had to do with age, and you are correct. It is not possible to give you an age because when you are in spirit, there is no time. No, there's no longer any time. So you, time is from this point to another. You can look at it as space, if you will, um, because it is how long it takes to go from one point to another. So when you are in spirit, even though we have led many lives, there is no time. So it is difficult to say that I am so many years old. However, you can think of time to a certain extent as what time you existed when you were on the earth plane, in physical. So you can look at your past lives. And I have had quite a number of past lives so that it is, um, it will take me a little while to give you a closer estimate of that. Just give me a moment. Let us say that I have been in physical form through various incarnations uh, for about, it is still hard, just take, figure 600 years. So that was many lifetimes to be on the physical 
planet and in the physical plane. Some of them were short and some of them were long. Um, and so if you figure it was close to 600 years, that would be good enough, I should think. And um, the next part of your question, you ask me what is behind me. Now, if you are looking at the background that is on the... Um, on the no, screen. I'm not looking at the background. I'm looking at you in spirit with... I see around you. And by the way, I got a thousand years, so that's interesting. Um, but around you, um, from your shoulders back, uh, behind you, and I want to know if what I see is what you what it is, but I think I do. Um, it, it is probably just energy, um, which is which is me <laughs> uh, radiating out, and what you are seeing now. You are seeing with your. Um, um, your me I wanted to say metaphysical eye, but your third eye, you are looking at not with the, the eyes of seeing, you are seeing other things. And um, so I cannot tell exactly what you are seeing because I cannot see it. Um, but all that is here is the, the picture of the medium. In the, I am in the medium. And so I bring extra energy. Um, extra energy is probably what you are seeing. Um, that that is what it is, uh, essentially an aura. It could be a, what you might call a halo, but it is because I have brought inside the medium extra energy, and it radiates out into her aura as well as from her being in front and back in every way. I am part of herself, so I am. I, I am part, I am one with her. You might say that similarly, as I am with the medium at the moment, is the way you are with God. You are a small part, or you are a part of God in every day, in every way. And that is your existence. And that is the answer also to the questions that were previously asked. Why do you have no limitations? Or why do you have limitations in the physical plane? But your spirit self, is not limited and it is part of God. And so the powers of God reside in you while you are part of God at all times. And so when we come into spirit, there are many things we initially experience because of our former attachment to the physical being. And so we see things and understand things differently than we do after a period of time, which remember does not exist. So it's like a space that um, is traveled. And there is information and There is information and understanding which slowly comes to you more. So that is why you are said to grow in spirit, because you begin to understand more fully the ways in which you were always one with God and that you are now with God. And you are now with God. When you are in spirit, you are now with God without some of the physical limitations of the physical body, but it is the same powers and the same energies and the same fulfillment. Just, just differently expressed, let us put it that way. 
and because there are no limitations of the physical body and energy is more what it is that you understand about yourself. I don't know if that was helpful at all. I have one more third part because you bring me into this space. I love this month, this, what you do. So where I am now, if I'm talking to you and I'm not out grocery shopping, but where I am now with you is the hard part for me now is that when I'm in the position with I am now speaking to you, everything I see here on earth is so easily solvable, so easy. It's just so easy to solve it. And I think my frustration is that when I'm in the place I'm in now, so much time is wasted and so much energy is wasted. And I find that I have to actually turn the media off because I hear discussions where the answers to absolutely everything are so simple. I didn't understand your last statement. I understood about your having the knowledge, understanding that everything is now simple and can be solved and you have greater knowledge than you have. But I'm not experiencing it when you speak of it as wasting time. Man, kind. Every, in other words, I hear when I go to the place I'm in now with you, it's frustrating because there's so many good things that can be done or better things done and they focus on whatever and everything is so simple. It's not hard. Every single thing can be solved with one click or one answer and they don't do that. And it makes, so I, I have trouble, for instance, watching the news or I have trouble listening because people just talk they make it bigger than it is, in other words. And that's the place I'm in now. And it seems to be more prevalent in my life, especially in my downtime. So um, I guess I'm just impatient or not even impatient. I just don't understand why people have trouble or maybe they see it and they don't want to see it or maybe they don't want to fix it. I don't know, but it's just an observation at this point. Okay, I understand when you uh, made references to listening to the news. And my suggestion is, do not watch the news. Do not listen to the news, except a tiny bit, perhaps, if you feel you need to keep up with it, but do not listen to them carry on, because as you said, most of them are just talking. They're making their efforts to put well, spin on some of their words, make them more attention, make it give you, make it more important than it is. And uh, that is part of what they have been trained to do and they think is good to do. Um, and so I can see where it frustrates you. So I would suggest that you not watch the news. It isn't necessary for you that if you stay in the head and the understanding that you can solve every problem because every problem is solvable and you can go within yourself to find the answers. Or if you don't want to spend the time right at that moment to find the answers, uh, you can uh, delay it by putting it off till another time when you are alone or home and not busy with the grocery shopping or the laundry or um, some detail of your work, which is demanding your time and attention. And, but if you need the answers, you can take time off from the outer world to move to the inner understanding that what you, um, the inner understanding to find the solutions to your problems or your questions. Actually, I'm referring to doing what I do. I deal with everybody's problems, obviously. And the answers are always so simple, but people in general, problems fighting over a parking space. Um, who's gonna get what? Who's gonna do this or whose job is it or whose key is it? 
they're also simple. And I think the problem I have, it's not even a problem. It's just that I always look at it as being so simple and they make it so difficult. In general, that's a general statement. So you are becoming impatient. No, I'm an observer. More of an observer. And you are impatient in the sense that you are finding people are wasting time. Yes, probably. Over issues which are not important or are easily solved. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Do you need to find a solution for that problem yourself? No, nope, not at all. I just spend more time on my own and I'm really good at that now. You know, the noise. I learned to say, I have to go, the doorbell's ringing. <laughs> no, I don't do that. I, it's an it's observation. It seems like the more work I do and the higher I go, the more mundane the stuff on the ground is chasing over whose turn in line is and people talking on cell phones and it doesn't bother me anymore it's just an observation and I don't feel anything about it it's just an observation that people it's sort of like if you throw a piece of grain on the ground and you have 15 chickens and they all go after the one piece of grain and kill each other for it you know what I mean it's that way but it seems to get more and more it, it just seems like they're all focusing on whatever it is and not looking up or out they're just well, you are somewhat correct. People are all focused on whatever their life is, for the most part. There are people who pursue um, enlightenment, as as I think you're referring to. Um, and so they do not um, fight over the one grain or what is available. Um, it, the, it reduces, they live a, a comfortable life, but one that is calm and peaceful at the same time, and they feel no need to fight over things of the earth because there is always more than enough for everyone. And uh, so there is more than enough for all. So if this piece of grain is not available to me, the next one will fall at my feet or I will get one further down. It, it, they become comfortable um, with the illusions of others even. Allowing people to have their illusions, not being impatient with them, knowing that that is just how they are and how they need to be to function in the life that they have created for themselves. You see, you can look at it that way. They are as they need to be within the life they have created for themselves. And you need not be impatient with anyone. Um, I'm not impatient. I'm an observer. And I mean, I'll, I'll let it go at this, but Soros and all these people think that all the money they have is so powerful and everything they build and people build cities underground and they think they're going to go to them don't they realize that a when they leave here they take nothing with them and b if they go underground someone just has to plug up an air hole and they'll all i mean people are just it's being an observer that's all i am i'm not emotionally involved it's just i find it amazing they don't see that People see what they see because they are creators and they are busy creating their own world. It was different. You observe what you think they are creating. They do not see what you see because their idea of their creation is different. It is, since everything is an illusion, their illusion is one thing. Your observance of their illusion looks different. So they don't even see what you are seeing. And you don't 
find you find it amazing that they don't see what you see. But the truth is, since everybody creates their own illusions, which they call their lives, and that everyone's life is different from one another, then it can't be the same as what you see. It is hard to explain it other than that. It's like Robert would understand, because he's musical, Styx wrote The Grand Illusion. Very interesting. Thank you very much. That was excellent. You're welcome. Are there any more questions? I have two questions. Yes. Um. So the first one has to do with... um metaphysical work like rituals and stuff so all the time that I'm doing like metaphysical work for other people like I feel instantly like 100% confident and they call me like two days later like oh my god your stuff was accurate this work this work this work but whenever I do stuff on myself I keep second doubting it like I'll say oh I, it's gonna work it's great but then five minutes later I switch like what if it doesn't work but what if it don't work and then it's like a couple minutes later then it comes to me like okay no it had to work I know it worked it works for everyone else when I do it so why wouldn't it work on myself and then I flip again to what if it doesn't work yada yada I did like this whole ritual yesterday with these candles are still burning out there are these three-day candles and I've been sitting here looking at these candles <laughs> and I'm like keep going back and forth with it has to work but what if it don't work and I'm wasting my time with these candles and I don't know why I second doubt my magic on myself but when I do it for others I'm 100% super confident and it works well you lack confidence in yourself so when you are working for others it puts less strain on your need to have confidence in yourself. It is always difficult for any psychic to do a reading for themselves. Now you are talking of rituals to accomplish certain things in your life. You are putting out energy through these rituals. And what you are telling me is that you have self-doubt in these rituals, particularly when you are doing them for yourself. Now that could come from two, either of two things. Either you don't think you deserve them, and so that may be a way, reason that you continually question whether they will work because if you were truly deserving, then they would work and you would know that. So you must have a lack of little confidence in, in yourself as being worthy of having these things work. I think that is the problem for you. So it is a slow problem that you will have to take care of if you wish. You do not have to but you need to bring about more confidence in yourself. You could always um, begin by saying things, making affirmations um, about your confidence in your ability to do rituals that are effective. Um, one of the suggestions is that before you go to sleep at night, you make statements, make 20 statements of something that you want to occur and be correct. And so you want to know that you are deserving of having these rituals work. So create a sentence that helps you say that you are deserving. I am deserving of having everything I want in the universe because I am a good person and good things should come to me. Rituals work perfectly for me 
because I am a good person and I am worthy of having rituals work perfectly. Create a sentence, something like that. I am worthy and entitled to have effective rituals for myself, to make effective rituals for myself. You can do something like that. Say it just before you are going to sleep, when you are in the position in bed. I am worthy and deserving of having all rituals work perfectly for me. Perfect. Yeah, I think you're right 100% with that because I have very low self-esteem. Yes. And I always put myself down and I always say... And we have um, to stop that habit. So don't even talk about it right now. We don't want to know what you say about yourself. We only want you to say statements like, I am worthy and deserving of having rituals work for me. I have confidence, this is another good thing to say, I have confidence in myself and my abilities. You can say, I am a wonderful, loving person. I love myself because I know I am good. And just repeat that statement before you are going to sleep. Try one statement, pick your favorite. Um, I am worthy of having rituals. I am deserving and worthy of having rituals work perfectly for me. Say that 20 times and do that for a couple of weeks and then change to, I love myself. Or start with, I love myself because I know I am good and I am deserving. You can put that in. And um, I totally love myself in every way because I am worthy and deserving. Make the statement the way you want it to be, but it has to be positive and it must, um, it must reflect what you want to get and what you want to feel so that you can overcome your low self-esteem. You can say that I have confidence in myself and my abilities and try that for a few weeks to see if that gives you more self-esteem. You will know, you will begin to feel a little bit different and you will make the decisions differently when you begin to have more self-esteem. And so you need to give yourself self-esteem by making these statements as you are going to sleep at night. That is the best time to talk to your subconscious mind is when you are about to fall asleep. But any time that you are in a situation where you are sitting and having nothing to do but wait, you can begin to think these rituals in your mind and just, or these statements in your mind. So take a piece of paper and write the statements down so that you have five or six different statements about how perfect you are, how good you are how you are deserving to get everything you want in life. This will not make you vain. This will not turn you into a terrible person. It will simply elevate your self-esteem so that you can accept the things that come to you. Because part of the problem of low self-esteem is that you reject the good that comes to you because you think you are not worthy or you think you are bad. And so we spend no time in those kind of not, not thoughts. And it is up to you to choose to make statements and thoughts that are helpful to you and good. Awesome. I'm going to do that tonight. And my second question was about my cat, Mason, who passed last July. He was my familiar. 
and I don't know why he why he left me. I just feel he sh he's supposed to be here with me and I just feel something wasn't right. He wasn't supposed to leave me. And where is he right now? And was he suffering when I, I wouldn't him down? I just, I wouldn't do it. So he died on my floor and I don't know if he went through pain or I want to know why he left when he was my familiar. I feel like your familiar is not supposed to leave you. Yes. Well, you are not correct in your thoughts. You're familiar um, that you have has a specific lifespan and a natural lifespan and is subject to illness. That animal that you are calling your familiar will then stay with you in spirit. And so you want to know where he is? He has turned to return to the great cat spirit. But he is still also with you. Is he in this house? Excuse me? Is he here in the house? He is with you. And it is not as if he is in the house. He is with you. So you have to realize that he is, his spirit is constantly close to you. It is not in the house, it is close to you. Although that may put him in the house, but then he will be in the car when you are in the car. So you have to keep it that, remember that. Now, did he bring me these guys, Brian and Ivy? Because the night that he died, my last words to him were, don't leave me alone. My uncle called me an hour later that he found me, Gwen, Siamese, which was the same breed as him. And they were all set for a home. And they lived literally five minutes away from my uncle's house. And he got them for me. So was that like a sign for me to have these guys that he bought them to me? You can think of it any way that you wish. The Yes, think of it any way that you wish. It does not matter if it is 100% correct that he did it. He did not do it. He did not have necessarily the power to do that. The familiar is an energizing and powerful spirit when they are part of you and with you and they affect your thinking and your um, it is hard to explain. The animal spirits bring extra energy to yourself and make you more powerful. You now have two Siamese cats. These are your new familiars, if you wish to think of them that way. If you want to have your old familiar back, he is with you also. It is like every, the people in your life, when they transition, they do not abandon you or leave you. They often stay fairly close to you to be like your cheering section. I do not know how to explain it, but they they stay with you to try to help you. Um, and they can abandon you too if you do not make progress, if you cannot. Um, change your mind after hearing these words. If you do not work on it, um, they may just leave because you are not putting in the appropriate effort to overcome some of these difficulties that you have. To say, I will do that tonight, but you must do it tomorrow night, and the night after that, and the night after that, and the night after that, for it to be effective. I will. I still do Brahms' healing every night. 
I feel <laughs> every single night before bed. I make sure that I do that. Well, then when you are in bed, make sure you do these things for yourself. Okay. Because then that will be the next thing that you will be changing. You have taken care of Brahms and you can continue to take care of him because you are a healer. You are part of God. You have are able to harness the energy that you have and send it out as healing energy. You sent it to Brahms. You still send it to Brahms. You can send it to other people. You can keep it within yourself. It does not matter. But it is there within you, just waiting to be directed. Okay, thank this you. Something that you will come to understand over time when you see all this continue to work. You are talking about rituals that you know work for other people and help other people get their wishes. Well, these rituals are nothing more than generating of power within you and the person you are doing the ritual for in order to have the confidence and create that which they are hoping to receive. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Well, it is getting late and we have had some interesting discussions today. Thank you for your questions. I hope the answers have been of some help to you. And so I'm going to leave you now. I give you all my blessings. Good night. Good night. I am back. Okay, <laughs> well, it's time for me to say goodbye too. I hope you enjoyed the evening. Remember, I love you all. Good night. Good night.